So you've started eating low sodium foods, you've started exercising, you're taking your blood pressure medicine, you've watched my other video about how to take your blood pressure correctly at home, and now some questions have come up. Today I'm going to answer some of your most frequent questions, most commonly asked questions about how to take your blood pressure at home, and some common things that you might be facing. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor and I'm also the cooking doc. And each week we try to cover one topic to keep you informed and something that you can use every day to better your health. Remember, everything we talk about here today is just for information. This is not medical advice. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you never miss a new recipe or a new weekly health tip. Here are six of the most common questions that get asked about taking your blood pressure at home. Number one, what is the best time of day to take your blood pressure? Well, this is something you should ask your doctor, but here is my general advice to people that I'm seeing in the office. When we're making a change to your blood pressure regimen, we like to check it in the morning and then in the evening. That allows us to get two different readings at different times of the day when your medications are having different effects. And sometimes when we've made some changes, the more information we have, the better. So I have people start with twice a day to begin with, and then we taper down over time. I also like to have people check their blood pressure 30 minutes before, and then a couple hours after they've taken your medicines. So of course you expect that blood pressure to be lower after you've taken your medicines. But in a perfect world, we would have you with enough coverage from your blood pressure medicines so that even before you take your morning dose, your blood pressure is within a good range. Number two, what if your blood pressure is high at the doctor's office, but normal at home? Well, one thing it might mean is that you have white coat hypertension. White coat hypertension is when you see a doctor in their white coat and that causes your blood pressure to go up. But I don't even wear a white coat and I'm a doctor. And when people come to my office, their blood pressure still often goes up. But when I have them check at home, it's usually in a good range. So that can mean a couple of different things. One is that the stress and anxiety of going to the doctor just kind of raises your blood pressure up some, and it's not necessarily clinically meaningful if all your blood pressure readings at home are okay. You know, a doctor's visit can be really stressful. You can get bad news. It could be very expensive. You may be in a new environment with traffic. All kinds of things can raise that blood pressure up. So I like to compare what the blood pressure is like at home and what the blood pressure is like in the office. Now studies show that the best case scenario is that you have well-controlled blood pressure whether you're in the doctor's office or at home. But if that blood pressure is a little bit high in the doctor's office and otherwise okay at home, sometimes your doctor may make a clinical decision to just say, well, that's okay. Other times your doctor may say, well, you're in a lot of stressful situations throughout the day we want your blood pressure controlled even when you go to the doctor. So they may increase or change your medicine. This is a personal decision that you should be discussing with your doctor, but it's very, very common. Number three, what if my blood pressure is all over the place? 160 systolic, 120 systolic, 150 systolic, 130 systolic. That's normal. For a lot of people, the blood pressure is variable. It depends on all the things going around you at that time, depends on when you've taken your blood pressure medicine. It can even depend on whether you've just stood up and sat down. There are a lot of things that can change your blood pressure from one minute to the next. That's why I like you to follow a strict routine, follow the instructions that I set out in the other video. You have a relaxation routine to check your blood pressure the same way every single time. That allows you to get some real consistent readings. And even if you're doing that, your blood pressure still may be up and down. What if you just got a phone call an hour ago with some bad news? That may raise your blood pressure. What if you have a headache? All those things can change your blood pressure from one minute to the next. And so having variation is totally normal. But here's the thing. If you're measuring your blood pressure twice a day for a week or two, you should have enough readings to really get an idea of what the average blood pressure is. And if you don't have it, if your blood pressure is still all over the place, your doctor or nurse practitioner or physician's assistant may order something called a 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitor. That's essentially where you wear a cuff on your arm, 24 hours, and it squeezes every 15 or 30 minutes and gives us a great idea of what your blood pressure is like throughout the day. That can really help us as we're trying to manage high blood pressure and make sure you're on the right medication and diet regimen. 
Number four, how often do you need to check your blood pressure? Well, if your doctor has just made a change in your blood pressure medicines, or if they want to watch it closely, I recommend twice a day, as I was talking about before. Now, once you have a stable regimen and your blood pressure is under good control, you may be able to scale way back and just check it a couple times a week using the same uh, routine every time. So you start out frequently checking it to make sure the medications are working. And then when you have a stable blood pressure, you know the medications are good, your blood pressure is controlled, you can usually back way off. But talk to your doctor to get a good schedule from them about how they want you to do it. Okay, number five, this is a real common one. What if my blood pressure goes up every time I want to check my blood pressure because I get anxious? That used to happen to me when I used to check my blood pressure. I used to think, oh God, here we go. It's going to be high. And then we check it. It'd be a little high. Then I press the button again. And then I get more anxious. And then we get higher. And you'd be stuck in this cycle. So for you, things are a little bit different. You want to have a relaxation routine of five to 10 minutes of deep breathing before checking your blood pressure. And you may not even be able to get to a point where your anxiety level gets so low that we can get accurate blood pressure readings. For you, I suggest you talk to your doctor and see if they have any other suggestions about how to make sure you can do it in a calm and relaxed environment. I've even had people that I see in the office that I tell them not to check their blood pressure at home because it just brought on so much stress and so much anxiety that they just couldn't do it. Okay, the last question, this is one that I get all the time. Should I take my blood pressure only when I think that it's high, like when I have a headache? Okay, well, this one's a little more complicated because for the most part, high blood pressure does not cause headaches and it doesn't cause symptoms that you feel. That's why high blood pressure is often referred to as the silent killer. Now, there are times where the blood pressure gets super high, something called a hypertensive urgency or emergency, or when you're having a bleed in your brain, real serious conditions where you get a headache and high blood pressure. But for a lot of people, the high blood pressure comes because you have a headache. You're having some pain and that makes your blood pressure go up because pain makes your blood pressure go up. Now, if you're having an acute headache or really severe high blood pressure, that's a different story and you should certainly reach out for immediate medical assistance. And again, remember, none of this that we're talking about is medical advice. These are just general circumstances and I'm giving you information. Please talk to your doctor about any specific questions you have about your blood pressure or your headaches or anything related to your own medical care. This is not medical advice. So I hope you learned something. High blood pressure affects millions and millions of people in the United States and all throughout the world. It can lead to cardiovascular disease and stroke. It can be a risk factor for kidney disease. So making sure you know how to check your blood pressure at home and have all your questions answered and take your medicines is key. And of course, this is the cooking doc, so make sure you're doing everything from a dietary standpoint to help keep that blood pressure down. Thank you so much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Check out my website, cookingdoc.com. Check out my book, The Cooking Docs, Kidney Healthy Cooking, A Modern 10-Step Guide to Preventing and Managing Kidney Disease. And I will see you next time.